Hello and welcome to Makers of All, Master of None, where today I will be showing you how I made a pair of leather gloves. Now the pattern of these is actually by Diesel Punk, so I'll leave a link to his shop as well as the YouTube tutorial video that he has. So this is not a tutorial, this is just me showing you what I've done and also a bit of an update because it's been a while since I uploaded and really it's because there's a couple of big projects I am editing at the moment as well as some smaller projects which are not filmed and just you know life being busy but I promise you there are videos in the working and I do have plans on how to kind of deal with this longer term I just need some time at the moment to kind of focus on what I'm doing so videos are coming they are just a bit slower so apologies for that but if you want to keep up with the videos coming up, please like and subscribe and follow so that you can get notifications when they are uploaded. So this leather gov is a gift for an elderly gentleman for his 80th birthday. And because of that, we are not using the chrome tan leather scraps as um, was suggested by the assembly instructions. But instead, we're going to use some goat leather. And I got these goat leather from uh, GH Leathers or their website is leathermerchants.shop. Not sponsored, but they do offer a lot of variety in leather and you can um, pick and choose whatever color you want. So we went with mocha as the main color and, and some granite as the accent pieces. You might have noticed that the pieces are already cut out and thank you to the person who did it for me because I was busy working on another project, but there was a little bit of a mistake, but I'll show you that later on. Put some uh, leather cream on my uh, the two pieces um, from the back just so that um, it's smooth to the touch now, so you won't get irritated, with, which my hands were getting when I was sewing this little patch on. So we'll see how it dries out. Um, hopefully it shouldn't affect um, coloring on the front and there's a bit of um, discoloration going on at the moment just because it's a bit wet. We're just gonna make sure before we do the rest of the pieces, otherwise the color is gonna change really quickly. Um, and yeah, we'll come back when it's dry. You can see this piece has dried clear so we're just gonna carry on with the rest of the pieces that need to be um, blemished. So for this uh, sewing where there are four separate circles but one piece on the back. Um, what I'm just going to do is just do one circle like this and then just have the threads travel at the back. So one circle travel at the back and then we restart the circle again and that's going to happen three more times and then that should give us just four separate circles on the front but uh, just one stitching at the back. Carrying on. After doing two acting pieces, now we need to join the two pieces of leather with the thumb. And this is where we are going to fix our mistake of the two pieces being split, which is the front, the two main pieces. And we're going to just do that with adding a cross stitch as we're going through. Once the thumb side of the glove is done, then it's just down to adding the little individual pieces going in between the fingers and that was probably one of the most fiddly bits of the entire project. But all in all it wasn't too bad. And the right glove was just a complete repeat of the, what happened on the left glove. So nothing much to report here. To secure the glove, as per the instructions, got some elastic band. And instead of using the same color as the main body, I chose an accent piece just to give it a bit more character. I wanted to do some kind of stamping on that 
bit, but it didn't show up very clearly. And what I used was actually a cutting tool instead of a stamping tool. So if I want to do some of those, I have to get uh, proper stamps for it later on. So just that, and then added the decorative stitching again in a different color, just to kind of highlight it and just to put the elastic band in place, which was a bit fiddly again. Not great, but fine. And just to finish off some wax over the entire thing, which I think gave a bit of discoloration to the glove and made it look a little bit distressed, but actually it didn't turn out too bad. I probably would prefer it not having that look, but it's fine. It looks aesthetically pleasing still. It doesn't ruin the leather or anything, so that's fine. So here's the finished product just to show you what it's like. The seams and the stitching isn't perfect. Um, I didn't punch the lines perfectly aligned and I kind of forgot how to end this, the sewing seam. So it looks a little bit ugly and bulky some, in some places. I didn't actually think I showed the, the, the cross stitch on the two pieces. If I don't point it out, you probably won't even notice it. So I'm happy to say that the elderly gentleman quite liked his um, glove. It's a little bit tight on his right hand, which is actually what he wanted, uh, which is totally kind of by coincidence that it is smaller on the right. I'm not sure why that happened, but it did. But they function well as a glove, and he apparently liked it so much he didn't take it off for his, for his entire visit. So that was a success. And I'll see you guys in the next video of Makers of 4, Master of None. Bye!